Happy New Year and hope you had the best Christmas holiday. Welcome to this week. After a long break, I'm Lord Nelson. Christmas is a time to give and receive. On Mrs. Staff and Randy's troop celebrated colorful arrival of Christmas at St. Thomas Primary School in Juba. Here's what we filed for you. On Miss Staff and Randy's troop celebrated the arrival of Christmas in Juba with the students of St. Thomas Primary School, Boys and Girls of South Sudan Scout Association. There was just one glitch. A special guest from the east had to be brought in to replace Santa Claus from the far north. With a joint effort, a tree was duly decorated before the Eastern Santa Claus sent the heart rate of young and old children raising by bringing the gift giving. We have some metals here. So, the scene was set for a memorable celebration with St. Thomas Primary School, the blessed venue. A natural and deserved choice was explained by John Ugolo, head of the Own Miss Juba Field Office. Means his partner, your partners for peace. Yes, it is more true and more important because the message of peace that these this wonderful children have spread across this country is what made them popular. I want to congratulate South Sudanese. You have great leaders in these children. These are the hopes of South Sudan for tomorrow. All you, the adults, need to do is to ensure that they have peace. They have education. Their rights are respected. And you provide all that will make them to be good leaders of tomorrow to make this country great again. Expressing her mutual satisfaction with the peace partnership, Miss Asha Judith, headmistress of St. Thomas Primary School, say, We pledge you support. The spirit of togetherness. We have been working with Unimis hand in hand since 2013. Today I'm very grateful to be with them. A student from St. Thomas Primary School, boys, scouts, and girl guides, and the Own Miss Choir composed of Rwandese troops entertained the crowd by singing chorals and dancing. Needless to say, there was much rejoicing. As South Sudan is looking for sustainable peace, inter-church communities together with internally displaced persons conducted a prayer for peace in Bor Town. Our colleague Samson Liberty was there and filed this report for you. The inter-church committee in Bor Town jointly with the internally displaced persons conducted peace prayers on the 2nd of January 2017 with the hope that Prayers for peace in South Sudan will bring a lasting and sustainable peace. Reverend William Toot from the Protection of Civilian Site in Bor, while giving a sermon, said that for peace to prevail in South Sudan, the church leaders must play a role to bring people together. 
Let all of us, peacemaker, show leaders, even warden in South Sudan, let us commit to peace. Peace will come. The year 2017 will be a year of peace. I believe strongly. God will bring peace when we come back. People of South Sudan, they will hear peace. They will see peace. They will touch peace and they will enjoy it. He's speaking on behalf of the UN family in Bor, Dabora Chind, the head of the field office, said her wish for 2017 is to see Bor become a peaceful place, tolerance with all the communities to live together, to move freely and safely. Separation of communities only encourages suspicion. Seeing communities standing together, praying for peace, reassures me that people can and will reconcile their differences and mend the fabric of society and live together as one people and one nation. This gathering is truly a people's movement led by the Interchurch Committee. I applaud the Interchurch Committee for this initiative. It is a people's movement that does not differentiate people by tribe, religion, or ethnicity. The prayer of the people is loud and clear. It is pr a prayer for peace in South Sudan and a better and brighter future for yourselves and most importantly for your own children. Participants at the prayer service express optimism that such gathering gives a signal that the previous harmony was shattered during the fierce fighting that erupted in 2013. Prayer, it is very glad and we really thank it. It gave back to signal that South Sudan could really embrace peace, say that this peace will really make changes in our nation. People will come together, will bring a spirit of togetherness, say that the life in which people were happy and seeing the crisis that started will get changed. Various observers have called for a political settlement to help solve the current situation and to let this once lively South Sudan rise from the destruction and loss of lives in which it currently lies. Welcome back. As we round out the year 2016, I sat down with the head of office for political affairs, Seth Komi, to get his views on the political landscape in South Sudan. We talk about the politics in the country over the past year and what he foresees for 2017. Well, political affairs, our main task is to analyze and the changing political landscape and be able to offer advice uh, to the mission leadership on helping them make decisions regarding the political situation on the ground in South Sudan. So this is our main task. We also liaise with the various components of the mission to look at the situation also regarding the neighboring countries, particularly the IGAD countries, how the politics of the IGAD countries also affect the domestic politics. And I have repeatedly quoted uh, one of the famous American politicians that all politics is local. So our politics here, what we analyze, the local decisions on the ground to a large extent shape the political landscape. But what we have noticed in the years that I have been as the director, the political landscape is always changing. So we always have to revise our theories, political theories, to be able to understand the ever-changing political landscape in South Sudan. What are some of the successes and challenges that you faced in 2016? One of our biggest uh, challenge is uh, the peace agreement. Remember that in 2015 August, uh, the leaders, uh, the political leaders, or the principals to the conflict signed the peace agreement. The implementation of the peace agreement has been very difficult. Uh, there was a big success when Dr. Rek Masha, the leader of the armed opposition, returned. And then uh, on the 29th of April, they established the transitional government of national unity. We were all full of hope. But unfortunately, uh, the situation changed with the July crisis. Uh, we have had this challenge of human uh, humanitarian challenges. We also have the issue of 
political space, how to come out of an agreement. But overall, I remain optimistic that uh, 2017, uh, the political leaders will be able to place the interest of the country above their own so that uh, South Sudanese will be able to develop their potential. What would you like to see happen with the implementation of the peace agreement in 2016? One of the key things that uh, we in the United Nations has always maintained an inclusive political process because we believe that this conflict that erupted in December uh, 2013 was a political conflict. It was a struggle for power, political power among the ruling elites. Uh, this has unfortunately taken an ethnic dimension because uh, South Sudan has not got, um, has not yet developed the national institutions. South Sudan ha doesn't have a national identity. So these are some of the things that we would like to see. The issues relating to governance, the issue relating to inclusivity, and the issue relating to political space, the issues relating to good governance, and uh, issues that we believe that when the political leaders come together, they would, able, they would be able to create a conducive environment for the majority of the people who are not involved in the political process to be able to continue with their livelihood. And my hope is that uh, we would be able to reach a policy, we would agree on the need for national reconciliation, for truth and reconciliation, for grassroots. Uh, this conflict has poisoned community relations. And we believe that uh, in 2017, my hope and my wish is that uh, all South Sudanese will be able to rise above uh, the animosities and live as Martin Luther King would say, the brotherhood of me, uh, brotherhood nations. Everything that I hope for is that we would have a, a very, very peaceful atmosphere. What are your main priorities in line with the mandates in 2017. Now, the whole issue is about the peace agreement, the implementation of the peace agreement. There are a number of areas that we in political affairs are interested in. Uh, first, we are looking at uh, the issue of constitutional amendment, how to incorporate uh, the tenets of the peace agreement into the interim constitution. Uh, this is very crucial. Now, we still do not have the Constitutional Amendment Commission being operational. Then we also like to see the Constitutional Review Committee. Then we would have to see uh, the executive and the legislative branches of government working hand in hand to be able to implement the laws that will guarantee human rights, that will guarantee political space, and that when you disagree politically, that doesn't mean you are enemies. Uh, we all have one objective, to, to wish for the economic development of South Sudan. And unless these political issues are resolved, there wouldn't be a conducive atmosphere for political, for economic development. And this is our wish for 2017. And this is what, in political affairs, we will be working with all the parties, mm, both opposition, and then we'll be also working with our counterparts outside with, through the mission leadership to be able to see how all these people, all these political actors can work together for the betterment of South Sudan. With the beginning of this year, 2017, we had the privilege to record messages from the United Nations senior officials that you are about to watch. Again, thank you for joining us on this week. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you on behalf of the Communications and Public Information Section of the United Nations Mission in South Sudan. We want to wish you happy, healthy, and peaceful 2017. Goodbye for now. Let us be reminded of the universal value of unity, equality, and compassion, which bind us all together as human beings, the spirit of Ubuntu humanity. These values should always be far stronger than anything that divides us. I call on all those engaged in conflict, be with organized forces, 
arms groups, militia, youth group with arms and others to stop fighting and silence the guns immediately. While there is no doubt that the fighting has cast a dark shadow over the implementation of the August 2015 peace agreement, we must never lose sight of the ultimate goal, a peaceful and prosperous future for the people of South Sudan. Peace starts within each one of us. I encourage us all to get together to help shape a better future through dialogue and reconciliation at all levels of the South Sudan society. On behalf of the entire UN family in South Sudan, I wish you all happy holiday season and a peaceful and prosperous new year. I thank you. It has been a, a tough year, but we put all our efforts together with other components, the force and the civilian components, to fulfill the enemy's mandates. I'd also wish to take this opportunity to wish them a happy new year and a Merry Christmas. I, I would also wish to convey my sincere thanks to our counterparts, the South Sudanese people who work together, and also take this opportunity to wish them a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.